Hey, what's up guys? Jess with Drifter Journey here with another awesome van video for you. Thanks for coming back to the channel. If you want to like and subscribe and share us with your friends, we really appreciate your support. So today we're going to talk about propane. Um, if you check our van build videos, you can see how we installed a 3.3 gallon Manchester propane tank to the bottom side of this van. And this is our second van. So our first van we used one gallon or sorry, the one pound Coleman green cans for our cooktop, but we had an S-bar gas heater. So our heater was plumbed directly into the gas tank, which meant that we didn't need propane in order to run it. We were only using propane for our cooktop. In this van, we decided to go with a propane heater, the Propex HS2000 heater, and we again have a propane cooktop. So we use the dual burner sink combo cooktops and we've been really happy with them the first one was Dometic this one is a knockoff because Dometic was out of stock when we built this van thanks COVID and so because we decided to change the heater over to a propane heater it made sense to put in a propane tank that was much larger so today I'm actually going to show you guys how the gas lines all look and then we'll also show you the extension kit so because we have that propane tank mounted under the center of our van most places that sell propane won't crawl under in order to fill it and that means that we needed to buy an extension kit so that they could fill it from the side of the van uh, which makes sense you know you don't really want to be working your regular job and then someone says hey i need propane and then you have to like crawl around in a dirty parking lot to fill them up so uh yeah without further ado i'll show you guys how it's all connected so this valve is what I'm talking about. Um, that's the extension kit where it pops out um, right next to the side of the van. So it's right underneath the door and we essentially have an extended bleeder valve and then the extended fill valve. And so the kit, the Nash Fuel Propane Extension Kit comes with all of this stuff. It comes with this mounting bracket that mounts to the rail of the van, um, the updated bleeder valve, the fill valve, and then these hoses. Here is the 3.3 gallon Manchester tank. And again, like I said, if you guys haven't seen the build video of how this is installed, we do have it in our band build playlist. You can check that out there. Um, basically what happens when you get the remote fill kit is it comes with this screw on head that goes onto the fill valve. And then you've got these adapters that screw onto the bleeder valve and then a hose for each. So the hoses just come right over to that fill that's on the outside of the van. And you can buy this hose kit anywhere from 6 feet to 12 feet long. I believe I saw listings on Amazon for 6 feet, 8 feet, and 12 feet. Um, we obviously only needed about 2 feet, so unfortunately we ended up having to cut quite a bit off. Uh, it's not difficult to cut. It's, I think, a Kevlar rubber tube and it's got this kind of fabric outside so it feels pretty durable the one thing that you got to be careful with these fittings obviously is uh, making sure that they're they're all sealed so some of them are flared fittings like this one and and some of them are standard fittings like this one and so you obviously can't use the sealant on the flared fittings and you just have to make them fairly tight but not over tight so We've discovered that in our propane journey, there's kind of an art to these connections. So the back side of this looks like that, where uh, essentially you have this L bracket here, and this is part of the L bracket. So this piece screws into the bracket, and then this piece screws onto the back or the front side of the bracket. So it's uh, the propane is essentially flowing through the bracket and same for the bleeder valve so that's all very sturdy and then we have just used uh, i want to say these are like a 10 10 millimeter bolt to and we just drilled a hole through the frame rail here to get that attached so that is how the nash fuel remote propane kit is hooked up it's doesn't come with instructions really. It's not super self-explanatory if you don't know what you're doing. I would say the hardest part was getting the tubes into these valves. Um, well, it's not really a valve, into this connection. So the tube into this connection, 
you got to really kind of shove it in there. The directions said that if you have a vice, that's easier, but we didn't. So there was a lot of pushing and grunting and sweating. So now I'll show you guys how our propane lines are run off of the propane tank. This propane tank um, comes with a regulator. Well, it's extra, but they at least sell you the regulator that goes with it. So we've got a two-stage regulator. Um, then you have your manual shutoff valve here. So uh, then we have an out for our propane and we've uh, put it into a T here. And that T is because we have this copper pipe that goes to our cooktop and this copper pipe that goes to our heater. So our heater is in the center of our floor in the van and uh, essentially you've got this flared fitting that goes into this quarter inch copper pipe and our heater sits right here. So this uh, copper tubing goes up into the floor right here and these are actually our exhaust and intake uh, tubes for the heater itself. So then for the cooktop, you can see that we've run this copper tube all the way over here, here. So we're on the other side of the van now. You can see that propane line coming off and it comes around. We kind of tucked it underneath this heat shield and put it here and it goes up through the floor of the van right here and then it runs up the wall to our cooktop. So anywhere that it seems like there needed to be some kind of bend that happened to hold the copper pipe in place, we've used these insulated clamps and screwed it directly into the frame and then I've covered that screw with some silicone in order to help keep water and moisture out. So this is in our pantry cabinet behind the drawers. You can see our slide rails here. Um, essentially that propane comes right out the floor and we've bent it back into the wall because our drawer pretty much comes all the way back to here. So in order to clear the drawer, we've bent it back to the wall, secured it to the wall there, and then it just goes up into our propane cooktop. So the cooktop didn't come with many fittings. Like I said, it was a knockoff from eBay. So um yeah it wasn't it also didn't come with instructions so we probably spent about an hour in home depot looking at fittings and whatnot we finally figured out the right combination to make it uh connect and not leak so yeah that is our quick and dirty review of our propane lines and how we ran that nash fuel remote propane fill kit um, we did not have any propane experience prior to doing this van and it was definitely an intimidating thing at first but once we kind of wrapped our heads around the fact that it's just pipes and connections um, and you know we got some help from the lady at Home Depot who took pity on us staring at fittings forever she was super helpful and uh, the other key to propane is checking for leaks. So I'll link all of the products that we used in the description below, but we highly recommend some kind of leak detection solution and the sealant. Usually you can buy them together. And the difference is that that leak detection solution is a little bit thicker in viscosity than the soapy water that a lot of people recommend online. And so what that means is that it is gonna like, find a leak and then it blows up a bubble really slow and it's just really visible so sometimes with soapy water if it's not soapy enough or thick enough you don't know if it's the soap that's bubbling or if it's a propane leak or it just drips away so fast that you can't really even see that it's leaking so we had really good experience with the leak detection solution it gives you a lot more confidence in your connections and makes you feel really good about the fact that they don't leak because we did have some leaking at first, and so that was um, very obvious, and then once we got them fixed, then it wasn't bubbling up anymore. And just having that comparison and that experience of having leaky connections and then fixing it and then testing again and not seeing those bubbles made us feel a lot better about our connections afterwards. So let us know what questions you guys have. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe as always.